Hi everyone, my name is Lisa Filion and I'm an artist and art teacher from Ontario, Canada. And in this lesson, we're going to be drawing a monstera leaf. And I've always really thought that they were super beautiful and I've always wanted to draw them. So I thought we would take this opportunity in this lesson to do that together. And the twist is we're going to be digitally painting the monstera leaf by using the app Procreate on an iPad. So let's get started. Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson. What we're going to do is open up our app Procreate and we're going to create our own custom canvas size for, so what you're gonna do first is click the plus button. And in the top right corner, you'll see another little plus button that looks like a folder. And what I want you guys to do is change over your unit of measurements to inches. And we're gonna make it a nice big canvas size. So I really like working with 11 by 14. And I wanna make sure that my DPI, which stands for dots per inch is set to 300 so that it's a high enough resolution. If we wanna print it later on, we can do that. And then you're going to press create and it's going to open up a canvas automatically for you. Now I've gone ahead and found my inspiration picture. So what you're gonna do is just swipe up from the bottom and open your photos app by clicking on it and don't let go. So you're gonna drag it over to, if you're right-handed, I would suggest dragging it to the left. If you're left-handed, drag it to the right and you're just going to snap it in place like so. And then now we have our inspiration photo next to our canvas in Procreate. So our next step is going to be using our color palette here. I'm just gonna clear my history. I have a palette preloaded that I downloaded off the Procreate site. It's called Flourish. Um, you can create your own palettes as well. So if I click on um, my palettes over here, you can see I have a variety of custom palettes. And if I wanna create a new palette, and we could just call it Leaf, let's say, I can set that to my default, go back to my disk view, and now I can start kind of dropping in the colors that I want to use. Um, so you could select a few key colors. So I'm going to select some really nice like emerald greens here and kind of create your own gradient. Um, and you could, you know, slide the colors down the color wheel, have them get, you know, warmer and warmer. Let's say want some lime in there as well. So something like this, um, just to be able to easily create your own color palette. The other thing you can do is if you wanted to import a picture or even import a palette or even um, just have a color that you've already put down that you want to add. So let's say I custom kind of mix a color here, um, something like this, where I've mixed you know a few different colors over top of each other to create that. I can simply hold my finger over it until I get this nice color picker. And then if I go back into palettes, I can actually just drop that color into my palette. So that's kind of a cool little trick for you guys. So I thought we would keep this lesson pretty loose, kind of abstracted, um, and just have a lot of fun with painting in this lesson. So I'm gonna use one of my favorite current brushes to use, which is called the Salamanca brush, and you can find it under painting. And normally when I teach Procreate, I teach you how to do um, under layers and over layers, and usually we start with a pencil base. Um, so there's lots of different steps involved in creating portraits, similar to what you would do in traditional media. But for this particular lesson, we're gonna work a little bit looser and just kind of go for it right away with our paint. Um, so hopefully that's not too intimidating, but in a way I think this might be easier than going through all the steps of, of trying to do something with pencil first. So what we're gonna do is um, start with a nice kind of medium green, um, whatever color you really wanna start with. I'm gonna make sure that Salamanca brush is at 100%. And I'm going to reduce my brush size to, let's see, 12%. So what I'm gonna do first is just kind of look at my source picture here as inspiration to kind of capture the leaf shape. 
And I'm using kind of sketchy broken lines to do that. I'm not worried about it being exact because every leaf is going to be unique from nature. No one will ever see your source picture. So it doesn't matter if it's not exactly like the one you're looking at. This is gonna go like this. Now I just kind of went for it, didn't really pay attention to the proportions. So this is gonna be a first good little trick to show you guys. If you start to run out of space, like I'm not loving the spacing of this leaf, we can actually change it later. So one of the benefits of working digitally is the ability to kind of modify the composition on the spot whenever you want. So go like this, maybe something like that. And then once you have it more or less the way you want it, what I'm gonna suggest you do is go around the edges, this time with a more deliberate stroke. So now I'm not even really lifting my brush off the page. You can go over things as many times as you want. And I am pressing hard. If you're using an Apple Pencil, it has pressure sensitivity. There's other styli on the market that also have pressure sensitivity. If you're using a regular stylus, that's why I was saying to keep your opacity up all the way. I've also set my eraser tool to Salamanca, or I am going to do that right now. And I can make it a similar brush size. And then it's almost like a reverse process. What you can, I'm actually gonna bring my brush down smaller. What you can do is you can go around the outside edge now and just clean up anything that you don't love, any little bumps. I like this brush because it has a texture to it that's similar to a canvas. Um, so it's got a really nice painterly quality to it. And then it also has even like a stroke that kind of leaves these little imperfections that I think are really nice um, in digital art. And so one of the things that I personally love doing when I'm painting on an iPad is I love to mimic um, traditional materials. So basically um, not have my work look overly digital, but try to kind of achieve that painterly effect that you would get um, from traditional forms of painting, whether you're using oil paint or acrylic or watercolor. Okay, so again, just kind of making it the way that I want it. Doesn't have to be perfect. So I do want these like painterly kind of brush strokes. And then here's the trick I was going to show you. We're gonna click on the transform tool, which looks like a little arrow at the top. And if you have it on uniform and magnetic, It'll just scale it up or down however you want it. So you can scale it on your page so that it's a pleasing composition. Um, the other thing that you can do, which is kind of cool, is you can distort or warp it. So I'm gonna click on warp right now. And if I wanna just exaggerate parts of the leaf, I can do that and you can do that at any point in this process and same with distort you can see that if you can skew it in different directions um, double tap with your finger two finger tap to undo if I want it to just kind of look like my leaf is turned a little bit to the side I'm going to do that again free form is similar to the uniform except that I can actually skew it right so I can squish it so I don't want to do that. I want it on uniform and I want to make it centered in my canvas like so. So once I've kind of established that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that same color with my pencil and drag it inside the lines. And if I keep holding down my pencil, you'll see at the top it says color drop threshold. It'll choose to color in more or less depending on the threshold. So obviously if I go 100%, it over floods it. So somewhere around 70 seems pretty good. And then what you can do is any little imperfections, cause you can kind of see my outline right now. Um, I'm just gonna go over with the same color. 
something like this. And just go around and paint over it. Now you wouldn't have to do this if you would have used a completely opaque brush, but because the Salamanca brush has some texture to it, and even at 100%, it's not 100% opaque, that's why we're doing this extra step. But again, I wanted to use this brush because it's very painterly. So I think that having a little bit of this ghosting effect is kind of nice for this particular picture, but you guys can decide how much of it you want to clean up or not. So I'm still kind of going over the edges here. And this could also be a time where if there's anything you want to fine tune. So I want to make that a little bit more pointy. I'm going to go over and kind of do that right now. I want to round this out a little bit more. So take this opportunity to just get that shape of your leaf exactly the way you want it. And I'm looking constantly back and forth. I know you guys can't see me right now, but I'm looking back and forth at my source to have that source of inspiration on hand. All these edges are a little bit pointier, so I'm gonna have them go to these little points. Some of them curl a bit. See what else can we add over here? Maybe a little bit more of a point. Definitely this needs to be pointier. That has like a little curl to it. This is almost like a square edge here. So you're just gonna go in and, and add those little details the way that you want them. And again, if there's any edges that you just want to go around and kind of clean up, you can do that at this point. I like to zoom right in to do a little bit of pixel peeping, which is another benefit of drawing digitally. Now I find when I go back to painting with acrylics or especially watercolor. It's funny because I'll try to zoom in doing my two finger scroll on my traditional paper, which obviously doesn't work. So it's funny how quickly you get used to something. Okay. So again, just cleaning up these edges but not looking for perfection at the same time so it's like kind of this fine balance between um, something that looks a little bit painterly yet refined okay so we have our nice shape and I think I'm happy with it overall and what we're going to do is we're going to add in these circular features so on our eraser tool, I'm still on Salamanca. We'll see if we like the effect that it's going to do. But what we're going to do is we're going to draw an oval and let it snap. Okay. And if you look at edit shape here, it's an ellipse and I can actually squish and edit that shape. And then where you, when you have it the way that you want it, you could take your brush and just color it in. And then the key here might also be to, again, have some of the edges be a little bit uneven, not perfect. So I just kind of did that little brush stroke at the end. Um, you can also, if you don't want to do the quick shape feature, you can just draw it in manually as well. So I'll just do that over here just to show you guys. And if I draw it in manually, I definitely have a lot more of the little splattered edges. So I just want to clean some of those up a little bit. So I'll go back around with my green and clean those up. And I'm creating kind of a little bit of like a 
an amoeba kind of organic shape. And a little trick to show you guys, if you're not sure how much is erased, if you click on your layer panel and you uncheck your background color, which is automatically set to white, you get a, a better sense of what parts have been painted and what parts aren't. So if you zoom in on that, and if there's any little edges, again, that you want to kind of clean up, um, I would suggest doing it in this view, because I think that you can just see, especially against this dark background, a lot more clearly what your edges look like. So I just want that perfect balance of clean, but also painterly. Okay, so something like this. My next trick to show you guys, um, actually first we're gonna name our layer just because it's something that I'm a little neurotic about. So I'm gonna name it leaf. And what we're going to do is tap on that layer and we're gonna select alpha lock. And alpha lock is a really cool feature because it is masking off your drawing. So what we've just done, and I don't know if you can see, but there's a little checker pattern in the background now, is that we've basically taken masking tape or masking fluid um, and we've applied it to everything that's white. So the only thing that is open and showing is the green of the Monstera leaf. And the reason for this is now we can take, you know, any of these other colors with our favorite Salamanca brush and you could do like a big line through it, right? And I can't actually physically color on the white area. So I've protected it. So I think that's a very cool feature for this application. Um, so I don't have to worry about coloring on anything that I don't want to color on. So I'm just taking like a very pale green. And what I'm going to do is add some definition around the edges. And again, because we've masked it off, it makes it really easy to do that. So you might want to pick and choose a few areas of the leaf where you kind of lighten the edges to the stem down the middle. If you guys want to add in your details of the veins in the leaf, you could do that. Again, so far we've only used the one brush, right? So we're going to try to challenge ourselves to kind of stick to this one brush for the time being. Okay. So I added some veins and still on the leaf layer, what we're going to do is we're going to take the smudge tool, which looks like a little finger, and it is also set to the Salamanca brush. So all three of your tools are set to the same thing. And you just want to find kind of the right opacity and size of brush. So my opacity is at like 50%. Um, and I'm just going to smudge this paint a little bit because I don't want to make it so perfect. If you're worried about um, ruining your base layer too, you could also alternatively do this on a new layer. So you can create a new layer above it and do the exact same thing I'm doing on that layer. Um, but I'm choosing right now just to do everything on the same layer. One of the other things I love about working with Procreate is the ability to isolate kind of experiments onto layers because you never have to feel like you're going to ruin your artwork. It kind of takes away that little bit of fear you might have for doing something a little bit more experimental or a little bit more abstract because you're worried that you might ruin what you've already done. So do all of your experiments on a different layer and then you don't have to worry about it.